Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Weather. My name is Mr. G, your meteorologist, back with you once again, and happy Monday. I hope you guys are having a great start to the work and school week. I have a weather forecast for you guys to talk about today as we talk about the storms that is currently moving across the country right now, where we're seeing some heavy rain across some parts of the south and the west. We're seeing some ice through the Midwest and snow across the Great Lakes. We're also seeing some wet weather across the Pacific Northwest as well. We're going to take a look at all of that and how it's going to evolve as the week progresses and the warm-up across the eastern half of the nation as well as we're going to come out of that deep freeze and into some more pleasant weather as far as the temperatures is going to be concerned as we head through this work week. Our city of the day is Houston, Texas, and yes, in Houston is under the gun for some very heavy rainfall this week. Well, they could pick up as much as eight inches of rain in some parts of uh, southeastern Texas, like around Beaumont over to the Houston and Galveston area. We're going to see widespread areas of three to five inches, but some locations are going to pick up as much as eight inches as we're looking at that heavy rainfall. We're facing downtown Houston there in the distance, which you really can't see right now because of a very low cloud deck and very um, moderate to heavy rainfall falling across that part of Texas right now, so you really can't see off in the distance. You can see big water spots on the camera lens there as that heavy rain continues to fall across East Texas. As you can look at the radar, right there above my shoulder, you can see all of that heavy rain across Texas into parts of Louisiana, Arkansas, and is leading to that freezing rain into the parts of the Midwest as well. Let's take a look at the radar sites across the country and the regions where we're seeing some active weather at this time. And then we'll move on to the forecast where we'll look at what we have coming for the remainder of this week, okay? Okay, here we are with the first radar area that we're going to look at today where we're looking at that heavy rain down here across East Texas right now uh, near the Houston area. That heavy rain is just moving over downtown Houston headed off towards the north and northeast there. We're going to be seeing that heavy rain coming from the south for the remainder of the day as well as into your day tomorrow. We're going to see more of these rain showers. Might see some rumbles of thunder in that as well, but no severe weather is expected, but a definitely Definitely tons and tons of heavy rain that we're going to be seeing rainfall in the inches here across East Texas. So we're going to be seeing some flooding and we know how Houston is very prone to flooding along the Gulf Coast there. So um, uh, Beaumont, Galveston, uh, Sugar Land, Corpus Christi, going to be seeing that flooding possibility as this area is very prone to flooding down there across uh, South Texas. And that's going to be moving into New Orleans and parts of the Gulf Coast eastward as we move through the get to the midweek point. So through tomorrow and Wednesday, we're going to continue to see heavy rain along the Gulf Coast where we're going to be seeing uh, flooding problems along the Gulf as well. So definitely get yourself prepared and get ready for that and be prepared to turn around and don't drown. So don't drive over flooded roadways if you're out there on Interstate 10 or on the um, or or 610 or anything like that, so please be very careful down there across Texas and Louisiana as we get ready and deal with this very uh, soak soaking wet week that we're going to deal with this week. So let's head up towards the Midwest right now and take a look at the sleet and the uh, the freezing rain falling across the Midwest and the Plains and into the upper Midwest right now. So we're gonna head up to our, our next location and take a look at that. Okay, here is the next weather trouble spot right now and it's going to be across Arkansas, Missouri and into Illinois and Indiana where we're looking at a very large area of freezing rain. All of this here is freezing rain extending all the way into Illinois and Indiana as well. We're going to start to see some of that freezing rain begin to uh, make its way into the Chicago and the parts of southern Michigan as well as we are going to be looking at uh, this this freezing rain and some mixed sleet as well. Might even be a little bit of snow from time to time as we're dealing with this very large area of this very large ice storm that's taking place 
across the Seven Plains and into the Midwest. We saw the sleet across Oklahoma earlier, and fortunately, you guys are going to be getting a break before more of it come at you from the south. But right now, we're definitely looking at that area of heavy freezing rain here where we could pick up as much as a quarter of an inch of freezing rain uh, in some locations where we're going to be seeing the heavier amounts of freezing rain with this ice storm that's moving across the upper mid across the midwest and parts of the southern plains now let's go over to southern california so we can show you the heavy rain down across the los angeles and san diego areas another area that's not used to dealing with that and where el nino is certainly making its presence known this winter all right welcome to southern california everybody as we look at this heavy rain falling over the southland and we're seeing uh rainfall rates in the amount of quarter of an inch per hour here especially around san diego and we're seeing a couple of bands of heavier rain across the imperial valley here near coachella near the arizona border that's going to be headed in towards the yuma area in just a few hours there we're going to be looking at that heavy rain and we're going to be seeing that heavy rain this is our san diego and Orange County right in here we're looking at heavier rain showers over that area lighter rain to the north over Riverside and San Bernardino County the Inland Empire we're definitely seeing some lighter showers but much the very steady rain falling across the south man there is Long Beach right there we're seeing more of those showers over the Los Angeles County and the LA Basin downtown in Los Angeles there and then over uh, Oxnard and Ventura County over towards Point Conception in Santa Barbara, we're seeing some showers at, at, in that area as well. And now as this begins to uh, head on out on the back side, we're going to start to see some thunderstorms moving into the LA and Orange County area as well. So as we head into Tuesday, we may have the chance for some colder air dropping down and some thunderstorms as well as we're going to start to see unstable air moving to the area as we get more showery weather on the back side of this storm system. But for right now, you're going to be dealing with this widespread area a very heavy rainfall we're going to be seeing some of those showers up towards las vegas as well and eventually that rain will be making across the state of arizona where we're going to be seeing showers in uh, phoenix and tucson we might see some of those rain showers as well as albuquerque in new mexico as that storm system makes its way toward the east eventually going to head into the gulf coast where it could bring some severe weather down toward the gulf states later this week and we, so we're going to be tracking that activity as that develops as well. So again, much uh, very heavy rainfall across the South Man in Southern California. And <coughs> Excuse me. And we have a, a big batch of rain that's just currently moving on shore down in San Diego and Southern Orange County. So if you are in Irvine, Oceanside, um, uh, Mission Bay here, uh, Chula Vista, National City, if you're down in San Diego, Escondido, in those areas, get ready for that uh, batch of heavy rain that's moving through the area right now where we're going to be picking up probably an inch or so of rain today. But total, we can see as much as three to five inches of rain in the higher elevations of the foothills around the uh, southern facing ca southern California mountains. So let's take a look at the Pacific Northwest as we got some more uh, wet weather in the Bay Area as well as Oregon and Washington. So a lot of areas today in America is dealing with a lot of uh, stormy weather out there. And we're going to also see the weather start to warm up across the eastern U.S. as well. But let's take a look at uh, Northern California so we can see the rain across the uh, Bay Area. Okay, so now as we take a look at what's going on over Central and Northern California, remind you there's a flood watch in effect from Southern California up through the Bay Area as well and into Northwestern California. So uh, Eureka and Crescent City all the way down to San Francisco to San Jose, LA and San Diego, we're going to be looking at the potential for flooding and mudslides as well when you have these strong El Ninos and those 
of those um, those atmospheric river storms or the Pineapple Express, that tropical moisture fetch comes all the way from the Central Pacific, that plume of moisture, and we're seeing it uh, coming into Central and Southern California right now. And we're looking at heavy rain through Central California. We also have a batch of showers here over the Bay Area. We're seeing rain now through San Jose, uh, San Francisco, Oakland, uh, Hayward, uh, Alameda, all those areas here in Northern California. And over Sierra Nevada, we're going to be expecting some heavy snow in the mountains up above 6,000 feet. But we do have a winter weather, a winter storm warning here across the Sierra Nevada. So if you're on I-80, got a crossover in Truckee, headed over to Reno or to Lake Tahoe. If you're going across I-80, going to be heading out into the plains. So mind you, uh, I-80 can be very dangerous to get over the, uh, the summit there over the in Sierra Nevada. If you're a truck driver or driving a high-profile vehicle, hopefully nobody's driving motorhomes this time of the year, this time of the year, but definitely a, that's a very uh, a popular route for truckers coming across the I-80 there, and it's also the Amtrak route, the California Zephyr uh, comes through that region as well as that train makes its way to Emeryville, California in the San Francisco area. But so uh, a lot of times just... Please be careful out there, okay, truckers? My best friend is a truck driver, so, you know, I always think about him when he get out on the road and he out there uh, hauling those loads and everything like that. So, Jeff, if you're out there today, I'm sure you're out there. So, be careful, my brother. Be careful. Make it home safe today, all right? So, anyway, um, again, <laughs> that's a pretty potent storm uh, affecting here in California. Let's take a look at the Pacific Northwest. Well, we're also dealing with a little bit of weather. And Portland has been the hot spot for sleet and freezing rain. Uh, you should have seen how much freezing rain and things have fallen over the, over Portland. They had a, that ice storm over the last uh, the weekend there, and unbelievable amounts of uh, sleet and uh, ice on the ground. It was just. It was, I saw incredible video of people trying to walk, people trying to drive. It was just not happening. It was a very bad situation out there. So let's take a look now at the Pacific Northwest. Okay, so now that we're looking at the Pacific Northwest, we have more wet weather to contend with here from Oregon into Washington and even up into British Columbia. We are seeing winter weather advisories, winter storm warnings through the uh, mountains there in uh, British Columbia. We're seeing winter weather advisories here across the Cascade Mountains, across parts of Washington. So if you are in Washington here to the east of Seattle, there were Mount Rainier and you're going to be seeing that winter weather and winter storm warnings for those areas. But we're just looking at some rain and even a little bit of freezing rain here across the uh, northern Oregon. So Portland, Bend, and those areas are going to be looking at that in Corvallis, Oregon. We're going to be dealing with that um, that freezing rain and some snow as well. We're also going to be looking at uh, pretty steady rain across uh, into Washington over the Puget Sound and Elliott Bay. So a lot of wet weather again, very stormy weather across the Pacific Northwest. The Northwest has had a very wet, wet couple of weeks. It's been absolutely miserable across the Pacific Northwest over the last, I would say the last three weeks or so. You've had a few spotty days in there, some decent weather, but overall we've been dealing with a lot of rain, lots of wintry, wintry precipitation. It's been pretty bad across the Pacific Northwest. This El Nino is not playing games. So let's take a wide angle look at the U.S. as a whole as, and before we move on to our map so you can kind of get a big picture of what's going on across America as far as our radar aspect is concerned. So let's take a quick look at the radar and then we're going to move on to our maps, okay? Okay, here's the big picture of the radar across America right now. As we can see that storm down here across the south, that big storm that's moving across the center of the nation right now is bringing that freezing rain, snow, and that heavy rain down across Texas and the, the, the uh, southern plains here. 
We're going to be seeing that moving on off to the east. That heavy rain is going to be spreading across Louisiana, uh, parts of Mississippi and Alabama, Georgia and Florida as well. We're going to be seeing that heavy rain and we're going to be seeing this freezing rain moving into the Ohio Valley and into parts of Pennsylvania and even upstate New York. So we're going to be seeing that freezing rain across parts of the Northeast, especially tomorrow when the New Hampshire primary takes place. You're going to be dealing with uh, uh, some wet rain and freezing rain as well and so temperatures tomorrow in New Hampshire and Manchester are going to be in the mid 30s we're going to be seeing that wet weather coming through that region if you're going out to participate in the New Hampshire primary for the Republican Party and in the Pacific Northwest we're seeing that rain across the Northwest that heavy rain down through California and we have a few snow showers from a weak upper level system across the upper Midwest so northern Minnesota southern Alberta in Manitoba, we're going to be looking at some uh, light snow showers for those areas. So that is a look at the very busy map here today. Let's move on to our weather forecast now as we talk about what we're going to be seeing for the rest of today in our trouble spots and what we're going to be seeing later this week. So. Okay, so now it's time to cover the rest of the weather forecast for America as we take a look at what we're going to be dealing with for the remainder of your afternoon today and into your day tomorrow so as you make your way through this work week. But here is a look at that mess that we're seeing across the upper Midwest. This is a nice, colorful uh, representation of that uh, big area of freezing rain. We're talking all the way from Oklahoma, North Texas, Arkansas, through Missouri, uh, Central Illinois, and into parts of our... Uh, Indiana but if you go up into Michigan you see that kind of bluish air that's the snow so we are seeing snow changing the freezing rain but this is a very large area of freezing rain I'm telling you this is one hot mess you don't want to be dealing with this I-8 I-90 passes through this I-80 I-70 um, I-55, 57 uh, passes through this, um, 74, 94, it's just a hot mess on the roadways, trust me on this one, I, I won't lie to you on here, this is some pretty serious stuff here, some pretty serious icing taking place here, as we see in that coming from Oklahoma, all the way up to Illinois and Indiana. Very, this is unusual. They're not usually, they're usually kind of like a, a narrow strip of this type of weather between rain and snow, where this, it's kind of like a changeover point between rain and snow. But this is a very large area. This indicates that there is a layer of warm air in the mid levels of the atmosphere which is melting the snow that's falling out of the base of the clouds falls through that that layer of warmer air that's above freezing where it's melting to rain and then just above the surface before that rain hits the ground it freezes and now it freezes pretty much on contact with the surface so with the ground the road the grass trees power lines anything that it touches it freezes and adheres to and that is accumulating so it's becoming very heavy so it breaks tree limbs it breaks power lines it can uh, cause damage to uh, roofs different things it can um you make your door stuck on your vehicle if you parked outside you won't be able to get your car uh, it, it just makes for um, slippery walking paths uh, porches things like that so personal injuries from slip and fall is going to definitely be a lot of hospital visits with this storm system here across the Midwest where we're seeing this very very this is a very large area of freezing rain I'm telling you this is bad. This is bad news right here. If you work from home, you are lucky. If you don't have to go outside or travel in this, consider yourself lucky. You are advised to only travel if it's necessary. You can pick up as much as a half inch in some locations. This is a pretty big deal that's going on right here. This is not nothing to take lightly. This is not a small strip or small. This is huge. This is hundreds of miles of freezing rain. I am yeah, that's, that's really bad. That's really bad. So here is our winter weather alerts across the Midwest 
From Oklahoma, we have a winter storm warning. Uh, we have a winter weather advisory over western Oklahoma, winter weather advisory over parts of Arkansas and into Missouri. We have an ice storm warning over south central Missouri. So Springfield, uh, Branson, and those areas with Joplin, we have a ice storm warning for those areas. So we are looking at uh, a hot mess here across the southern plains, the mid-south there, the, the mid-Mississippi River Valley. So again, here we are as we look at some of the ice totals that we've picked up so far over the last 28, the 24 hour period. Look at Tulsa picking up 28 hundredths of an inch almost a third of an inch of ice that's really thick that's that's a lot for freezing rain that's a lot that is really bad Tilwa, oklahoma picked up 15 tenths of an inch 14 in bartlesville oh good old bartlesville i love good old bartlesville just north of Do Do tulsa there McAllister, oklahoma glenpool oklahoma 1300s respectively so that over uh, about uh, over just over a tenth of an inch so a lot of freezing rain out there across oklahoma arkansas uh, we're seeing it through missouri illinois so please be careful be careful this is what we're going to be seeing over the next 24 hours that freezing rain snow heavy rain is going to be moving up as well so we're going to be seeing that rain move through the same place that we're seeing the freezing rain so we're going to be seeing rain cover move over so that might help thaw out that ice that's on the ground so that might be some good news at the end of the day this heavy rain and those warmer temperatures are going to be moving in as well and we can uh, move out that layer of warm air that that um that inversion see it's an inversion that's creating that layer of warm air and that can be moved swept on out of there as well so that's probably a good thing that the heavy rain is going to be moving through on your tuesday there so here is a look at the ice uh, still to come across the mississippi valley here so arkansas uh oklahoma missouri illinois indiana uh, ohio as well southern michigan we're going to be looking at a tenth of an inch in those in the dark purples but the lighter purples it's going to be as much as a quarter to a half inch so a half inch or less of uh, freezing rain that is a lot that is a lot that you know you might think, oh, you're going to get a quarter of an inch of rain. Yeah, quarter of an inch of rain, that's nothing for rain. This is freezing. This is ice on the ground. There's rain falling. You feel it falling as rain. You see it. You hear it as rain. It's, it's rain. But when it hits the ground, it immediately flash freezes. Flash freezes. So it's an instant freeze once it makes contact because the ground it freezes faster because that ice the and there is what you this is it. all right so we're going to break down some science this is why we study electricity and magneticism in physics and meteorology when you go to meteorology school if you want to get your degree in meteorology you're going to take physics you have to take electricity and magneticism because you you watching that at work here that the ground has electromagnetic currents the, and then that electro there's a static on the surface when that water hits the ground now the air above just above the ground is still freezing but it's slower to freeze those water droplets but once they hit the ground the addition of the static on the ground helps that freezing and that helps it take hold and that freezing that flash freeze hits quicker because of that static electricity on the ground when that ice, when those raindrops and that cold, cold air right at the surface makes contact. It's like a boom, instant freeze, instant freeze. That's crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> this is why I love this field. This is why I love this field. It's very, it's awesome. It's really exciting stuff. So here is a threat for glaze that we're going to be seeing across the Mississippi Valley today and all the way up to parts of the Great Lakes. And we're going to be seeing um, the very likely scenario where we're going to be seeing some glazing. This is that tenth of an inch. You're going to see the very likely, uh, the very likelihood of seeing a glazing of ice. That's at least a tenth of, tenth of an inch or less. 
but you're going to have a possible to likely scenario of disruptive ice. This is a quarter of an inch to a half inch. Up to a quarter of an inch to a half inch is more disruptive. This is where trees will start to break, power lines will break, the power goes out, um, and things like that. So this is where you start to see damage to the infrastructure when you have this much ice. Okay, so that's really bad. So let's talk about that flash flood, flash flood threat across Texas and Louisiana, Arkansas again. We're going to be seeing a likely scenario here where we're going to have flash flooding. It's going to happen across Texas. You need a huge, an inch of rain across Houston, New Orleans to make it start flooding. I mean, catastrophic flooding. Whole neighborhoods get flooded in Texas when it rains like this. So we're going to see that with this round where whole neighborhoods and areas of town get flooded where you're going to see uh, maybe a foot or so, you know, even like a foot or more of water flooding. So very, some le very low-lying areas across Louisiana, south the Gulf, the Gulf Coast of Texas. The Gulf Coast. If you've ever been to the Gulf Coast, one thing you have to know is very low, and the Gulf of Mexico is really high, and there's not like a clear distinction between the Gulf. It's not like when you go to a beach where. You go from the water to uh, a higher elevation and it's high. It's very low. The land mass is very low and the water seems to be very high. And there's not a clear um, separation from the water from the Gulf to the land mass of the Gulf Coast of Louisiana. Same thing for Mississippi, Florida. This is really bad. There's lots of lakes, tons and tons. Minnesota, we call Minnesota the land of 10,000 lakes. Minnesota don't have squat. And I'm going to use a bad word. Minnesota and the upper Midwest don't have shit on the Gulf Coast. They don't even compete. You ever been to Lake Pontchartrain? Lake Pontchartrain is so big. If you got the Great Lakes, that's all fine and dandy. But you, no, you got to go to the Gulf Coast. And the alligators is just... Yeah, <laughs> uh, my family, we're from Louisiana, and you got to go down to the Gulf Coast. You want to see a bunch of leaves? There are swamps and everything is water everywhere. It's just wet down there. The mangroves, it's just, you, everywhere you step, you just step in big puddles of water. You walk, you look like, oh, it's a flat land. No, you step, whoop, trip, you're down in the dirt, you're down in the mud, you, and there's quicksand everywhere, you step somewhere, and it's just water, sand is on it, and you sink in that crap, <laughs> alright, you're gonna learn, you're gonna learn today, so anyway, that heavy rain is gonna lead to that flash flooding across the Gulf Coast, so please be ready for that, we're gonna see the same thing from Wednesday through Thursday, that flash flood threat is gonna shift to the east through Louisiana, New Orleans, uh, Mississippi, uh, parts of Alabama and West Florida, so Pecola, uh, Gulf Shores, Gulfport, all those areas, New Orleans, Lake Charles, Baton Rouge, all those low-lying, very low, low, low-lying areas. I mean, are you, yeah. An inch of rain could cause a lot of problems down across the Gulf Coast. Uh, Florida on Friday through Friday, so Mobile, Alabama, Pecola, Apalachicola, uh, across the Florida Panhandle, again, New Orleans again, and Mississippi again, very heavy rain, very, 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 very heavy rain, several, three, you know, uh, an inch of rain could cause severe flooding. We're going to be looking at three to five inches, okay, let's, let's, let's just get to it. So here's that rain as it's moving across the first round, second band, there's a third band, look at that, fourth band, it's just, Band after band after band after band of heavy rain. Okay, yeah. Okay, so okay, let's look at this. Look at this. This is these these dark reds. That's five to eight inches of rain. The oranges is three to five. This here is two to three. The green, the dark green is one to two. This is an inch or less. This is an inch less, one to two, three to five, uh no, and half an inch or less. One to two, two to three, three to five, five to eight. 
So a lot of rain is going to fall across the Gulf Coast this week through Friday. This is going to last through Friday. So get ready for that heavy rain. This is what we're going to be seeing across the Houston area. We're going to be seeing bands and bands and bands and bands and bands of heavy rain until that storm that's moving out of California makes its way across the Gulf Coast and sweeps all that stuff out. But until that, you're going to have to deal with this rain out ahead of that. And we're going to see bands and bands and bands and bands of rain across Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Florida, and Georgia. So get ready for the heavy rain. Three to five inches for Houston. But check out Beaumont, five to eight inches. So we're going to be seeing a lot of areas picking up at least three to five. That's a lot of rain across the Houston area. They don't need that. That's they've been they've had a dry uh, a dry year for the most part, but this El Nino kicked in and it's no joke. They're drowning down there. So prayers for the folks along the Gulf Coast because they don't need that kind of rain. So here's that rain again and those temperatures, beautiful temperatures, 70s, temperatures in the 70s. Uh, as we move through the, the end of the week, that warmer air is moving in, so we're definitely going to be losing that chill. We're not going to have to worry about those temperatures in the teens. Those overnight lows are going to go back into the 40s, 50s, but you're going to be seeing those daytime highs uh, hit those 70s and even some 80s across parts of South Florida and maybe some 90s down by Miami. So uh, warmer weather is back and the wet weather is back. So get ready for that. Here is again another look at the ice through Tuesday. This is what we're going to be seeing across the lower Mississippi River Valley. So Arkansas, Southern Missouri, Oklahoma, North Texas. We're going to be seeing that uh, less than a that tenth of an inch or less than maybe further up near Springfield, uh, Missouri, where we're going to be seeing that quarter to a half, at least a quarter to half an inch. So a lot of freezing, that's a lot for freezing rain. That's bad news. That's really not good. Okay, down in Southern California, there is our storm. Here's our storm bringing that heavy rain to the coast there. And we're going to be seeing this big area of rain move through as we get into tonight. So tonight we're going to see another big, big we're seeing one big, uh, area of rain moved through right now moving into San Diego and Orange County and the Inland Empire but tonight we're going to see another big band of heavy rain come through Southern California again another solid round of heavy rain yet again tonight but we're going to see it rain all day but after this big push this morning moves through, it's going to be showery for the day. We'll see lighter showers. So it is just remain, stay wet, just showery weather. But then tonight, another big round of heavy rain moves through as we get another impulse around this storm system that's going to be bring another big band of rain into California and from the Bay Area down to the Mexican border as you can see there that big heavy rain and it's going to bring heavy snow to the Sierra Nevada so uh, that big round another big round of rain in California so so through to through Tuesday we're going to be seeing that three to five inches down here across along this coastline of San Diego, Orange County, and in the in, in, into the the valleys and the foothills of the San Bernardino Mountains, the San Gabriel Mountains, the Tehachapi Mountains, the Santa Monica Mountains, the Santa Ynez Mountains. We're going to be seeing those on the western and southern slopes. We're going to see where that heavier rain is, where we could be picking up that five or more inches of rain. So here's a look at the future radar across Los Angeles. Okay, so as with this rises its way through, that's what we're seeing now. Okay, this is tonight. This is tonight. See that? All of that yellow and red, that's tonight. Right? And then tomorrow, we're going to see another band of showery weather. But another big push later on tonight. So that's, that's going to probably drop uh, one to two, maybe even three inches in some areas just tonight from that next batch of heavy rain and some thunderstorms as well. So rain uh, and possibly some thunder as well across Southern California. Something they rarely see is thunder and lightning. So some, some isolated thunderstorms could be embedded with that very heavy rainfall. So now we've been really cold for the last week or so, but now that's all over. The winds have changed. The winds of change have moved in. 
We're not going to see those temperatures uh, below freezing in the morning right now across the south. And we're going to see those temperatures warm up quite nicely today as we see those temperatures hit those mid-60s along the Gulf Coast. And we're still going to see some 40s and 50s through parts of the Mid-South and Appalachia and parts of the Mid-Mississippi River Valley. Going to be a little bit chilly, but certainly nothing cold like what we've seen. And we're going to be seeing much of the same for that across the Upper Midwest and into the Northeast. A lot of 30s across the Great Lakes and the Upper Midwest, but we're going to start to see temperatures get warmer across the Mid-South and the Mid-Atlantic. Check out that 52 in Richmond, 45 in Louisville. So we're going to start to see the temperatures warm up and we're going to be seeing those temperatures uh, get pretty, pretty comfortable out there. Not too bad compared to what we've seen over the last week. And here we are. That's your weather forecast. My name is Mr. G. Thank you for watching me today, guys. Leave your likes, comments. Feel free to subscribe to the channel. I will get, see you guys all tomorrow with another forecast update as we update you on the changes and things that's yet to come later in the week. Bye-bye.